You're listening to the Horizon podcast. This week we've got the brilliant Fred Hughes, local historian, joining us. And he's an all-round absolute treasure for Stoke-on-Trent. So let's hear what he has to say. First thing is, um, I I don't uh, have a university degree or any form of, of qualification in higher education. What you see is what you get. And what you get is somebody who's very, very interested in what's going on around him. Um, so I was uh, I, I was actually born in Woolstanton in the in the colliery side of Woolstanton, a little pit village in that sense, and left in uh, the age of um, fifteen. They just, um, as far as education was concerned, they brought in the Education Act of uh, of 1946, which extended the leaving age from fourteen to fifteen. It also, a bit later on, it also brought in uh, the um, the level of grammar school. Um, I wanted to go to grammar school, but unfortunately, um, my um, the, my guardians, the people who were la- looking after me at that time, I was brought up by my grandparents, decided that they'd rather me go into um, into a labouring job to bring money into the house, which is fine. Okay, it's another way of looking at it. But by eighteen, uh, I decided I'd, uh, I'd I'd want to see the world, and the only way to do that in those days was to join the armed forces. Um, so I did do that and spent the next three years with seven, with seven altogether, um, touring mainly the continent, uh, Europe, um, thoroughly enjoying myself and wisening up, if you like, to, uh, to what life was about somewhere else, which, which it, it triggered my keenness for world history rather than sort of local history in that sense. Um, when I came uh, out of the army, I joined the police force and served another... 25 years in the police, um, probably enjoying my life, doing what I like to do, but principally earning money. Um, But by the time um, I left the force, uh, I wanted something different. I wanted something that I wanted to do for myself. Um, And so I started to write um, and um, had some work published. I became a politician. I decided that I was interested in in, uh, in social politics. I did uh, four years in the city council and four years in the county council. Uh, county council, which I sat on the cross benches, enjoyed my time there because it's such a wonderful building that is, and it's so steeped in history. Um, leaving that, then I eventually um, I got the job that I've always wanted, and that is in journalism. So we, we, we go back the, the last 25 years, that's what I've been doing. I published my first book in 2000, which is a history of Burslem, and published four books following that on, um, some which I've done for the City Council and for other organisations, which has involved the um, participation of the Univ- Stafford University. Um, so I'm enjoying my life. Uh, I'm enjoying my life uh, as much now as I as I was uh, as as I was when I was a, a younger person. I think that that division, that that sort of breaking from doing the job that you probably had to do when I was young, to the job that you were destined to do when I was old. It's just a you know, in a way, a writer in in mature years. Is um, is more experienced, having done the kind of work that you can only write about. It just takes time to put pen to paper. Um, I still write. I have a regular uh, column um, for the uh, local newspaper, the Sentinel. Uh, I still broadcast with Radio Stoke um, on history matters, and that's my passion: is is local history. Um, I, you have a wonderful library. Um, at home, um, which I always use as, uh, as as my sort of great reference tool. Um, as many books as you could ever that have ever been written on Stoke on Trent, I have here. Um, but I just love it. I, you know, I, I, I'm a member of the Arnold Bennett Society. Uh, I'm trying to help drive the Lunar Society. Um, I'm obviously I'm uh, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I was honoured um, to be given. Um, degree by Stafford University, which I treasure um, above everything else, to be quite honest with you, because that is, it's an acknowledgement that um, whatever I've done, um, you know, has been recognised. And, and, and I thank the, um, 
the university for for, for, for letting me uh, letting me into their um, their doors. Having said that, I mean I was always always a, a person involved in stuff at the university before I got a, a, an honorary, and I was uh, very often participating in in many um, in many of their um, um, experiences. Um, particularly when it came to local history with Josiah Wedgwood and, and those centenaries that w- they were good. The the uh, um, I remember the one they stepped the you know the the the, 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 the citizen of the century um, where we sat with the uh, the editor of the Sentinel, the editor of the Radio Stoke, uh, Christine King, who was then vice chancellor, myself. Um, itself was a, a wonderful experience. We nearly came to blows, but nevertheless, we agreed at the end to disagree. And Stanley Matthews was our person of the century, the great footballer, born and bred and died at Stoke-on-Trent. Marvellous, marvellous sports person. So basically, that's my life in a nutshell. I have many um, interesting pa- passions. Uh, I, I love walking. Um, I, I love rambling and I love climbing to a degree. Nothing, nothing exceptional. But visits to the Roaches was always a pleasure, and very often did that. Um, there aren't many places in North Staffordshire that I haven't visited, and that's because of the nature of the job I was doing for the Sentinel at the time. But um, I, I mean, I'm in well in my eighties now. I hope I, I can continue. I'm, I'm not as mobile as I used to be, which is sad. Um, but I do get around on an electric scooter, though it doesn't take me as far as the roaches. It certainly gets me around handling. So watch out for your legs as I pass, because it's got no horn on it. OK, Fred, so that's all about you. So how about telling us a little bit more about the history of Stoke-on-Trent and where you're from? Really, um, as I mentioned in a recent uh, contribution that I made to the Sentinel on Stafford today, you know, Stoke, the, 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 the heart of the college is virtually the heart of Stoke-on-Trent. Historically, it sits at that junction, that crossing, where all the lines of communication seem to come together or start from there, shall we say. The Roman road passes through exactly right on the front of the university. Um, the monks walk from, um, you know, from the monastery at, at Tolton Abbey, again passed by the university before it sprung off towards Longton, following the old Roman road. Of course, then the, the canal was um, was one of the central points of the canal was uh, in Stoke because it had a bonded warehouse there. And then, of course, the rail came to oust the canal, but everything sort of ran side by side for a while. And then you got uh, the rail communications, which was uh, obviously became the national um, travel institution, certainly between uh, the northwest and uh, the capital in London. And even after that, you know, Stoke and Trent, uh, uh, Stoke itself, in front of the university, not far away, you'd got the D road that um, was used to bring in more people, shall we say, people think that it was a bypass from the M6, which is wrong. It's the wrong conception. The D road was built in, in a way, not so much as a bypass, but also bringing people to, to you know, for commercial reasons, for um, education reasons. Um, and so, of course, we've got this, this focal point. Um, and Staffordshire University, of course, as you've said, it goes back to the pre, you know to pre-war years, really the First World War, that is, uh, and it just grew from there. It's amazing um, to to find that location. Where did it go to there? From there, you know, it just built and developed um, the colleges. Right in front, next door to you, of course, was the first centre of the CBI, the the, the Confederation of British Industries. You've got that building, uh, which we call the Potters Club, the you know the Pottery Centre, built has that uh, has that establishment, commercial and retail and um, industry, all all being brought into one one position. Of course, that's there. That is there at. Um, uh, still standing, um, still proud. So Stoke-on-Trent really is centred, in my opinion, on site of Stafford University and its and its close area. And 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 there, you know, geographically, where is it? Is it in Stoke? Is it in Hanley? Is it in Shelton? And where is Shelton anyway? Um, that's the other good thing about it because it has that sort of unifying geographical location where um, 
you know, Stoke-on-Trent can sort of be defined. If you want to go to visit Stoke-on-Trent, you will get off the train here. First place you'll see straight away in front of you is Stavage University. What better location is there than that, Sam? Well, it's interesting that you mentioned the Potter's Club because obviously that's still close by. It's still going. It's still going very strong. And the amount yeah. of companies that are now underneath that. So the, the Potter's Club takes over the, the top part, I believe it is, of Federation House. Mm. And then below that, there are alumni companies. So you've got Inspired Film and Media. You've got, yeah. um, you know, the our amazing animation studio. There's, it's And they're all, they've all come from staffs as well. So it's all they've, they, they are local or majority local or they're people that have come to the city and I guess become local because we adopt everybody, everybody that comes to Stoke, they're, they're part of Stoke for life we don't, I think that's a, that's always been said hasn't it about Stokies, we're really friendly, mm-hmm. so everything about us is, is friendly, so nobody ever wants to leave because you don't leave friendly It's a, it's a good point to take in uh, and again, it, it you know, that kind of welcome that's extended to all sorts of, uh, of visitors whether they want to stay and whether they want to contribute to uh, uh, to the district is is a matter for them, of course. But the welcome uh, status, as you rightly say, is is there, and, and hopefully it always will be. Uh, and and the um, uh, you know and and the the this, the Confederation of British Industries, of course, that was started by Sir Francis Joseph, um, who had his offices there. Um, amazing uh, character, um, who virtually owned the coal mines, all the coal mines in Stoke-on-Trent, in the, in the sort of south side of Stoke-on-Trent. All of the coal mines in Bucknell, in Fenton, in Stoke, uh, not so much in Stoke, but in Longton, uh, all belonged to uh, or had some influence by Sir Francis Joseph. Again, it all comes back to this one location, how much energy that was going on in there at that particular time. But the other interesting location there, of course, is the... Um, is the staff the North Stafford Hotel? I mean, that in itself has a massive connection with the communications. It was built as a railway hotel, but you look at the standard of that. It's it's the kind of thing that when you get off a train, you know, you look across. There's Josiah Wedgwood facing you, uh, and behind him as a backdrop, there's the North Staffordshire Hotel, which is which again, um, you know, is is part of that uh, that level of communication that we're so proud of. I think for that hotel, if those walls could talk between the the everyone that they've they've seen the the history that's gone through there the the I mean even the students we we have um, I think the our, our American football team they have their annual get together there where they get all the old boys come back and it's a it's a it's it's a good it's a good do <laughs> from what I'm told it's a very good do. <laughs> And we want to we want to keep that going, of course, and, and not and not so far away. Just you know, a few paces away, a couple hundred yards. You you know, you've got the um, the city college. You know, important again to the university and and the uh, you know the influx of that. And then you've got you, you've got the campus site on the other side of Lick Road. I think it's amazing. Um, I think if I lived outside of Stoke-on-Trent and I had a choice of, uh, of universities, again, you know, it depends on whether you're looking at STEM courses or whether you're looking at artistic courses, cultural courses. Staffordshire University is, is really a cut above a lot of them in the region. I think that's, a, you know, that's another excellent uh, attribution to what we can offer. Well, I know for me, I'm completely biased because I'm staffed through and through, but I know that our lovely Gaz has to have a more broad look with regards to all the universities um, mm. and what the education offer is locally. But you're completely right with the, the college local, the sixth form local, even you know Newcastle College and, and Stafford College and, and everything that all the student makeup that we've got, they come from far and wide. Mm. And they, they, there's a draw to here, so it's it, it's hard to... Hard to say anything against it because it's it's too well loved. Well, it is, and, it, and it, it's not always been like that, of course. I mean, if we if I take you back to 1910, uh, when the six towns, the six pottery towns, uh, decided to federate, um, I mean, it caused all sorts of issues. Um, it, it certainly took something like ten years to properly get off the ground, the negotiations. And then there was 12 months from uh, 1909 to 1910 where they had to prepare for this. And so many um, uh, so many innovations they had to create. Uh, the main one, of course, is which town was going to be the centre, the, the civic centre. 
And Burslem had the idea, of course, that already it was called the, the mother town. Hanley had an interest because it was the main shopping area, the main retail area. And of course, Stoke, uh, because of its uh, heritage and because of its past, going back the Saxon period and before. Burslem decided that they would, they would easily win it. So it went ahead and built a new town hall, which still stands in the middle of Burslem. Called, we call it the new town hall, built and opened in 1911 and closed its doors straight away because it was decided that Stoke would be the, the civic centre. Um, and then, of course, all energy was put into the building and the, the development and the reconstruction of Stoke Town Hall uh, and, the, and the creation of the King's Hall, which is, again, it's a, it's a magnificent place and it's one, it's a, it's a location that Stafford University used very often in celebrations and celebratory um, uh, um, courses. You, you know, we go into the, the King's Hall in Stoke on Town, I mean, it, it is absolutely mind-blowing takes your breath away, the way it's all set out, and the way we've continued actually to, uh, you know, to have pride in that, to develop that. Times change quite obviously, and but I think what's happening in Stoke at the moment, it has been for some time, and, and I can't really put my finger on it yet. It's not, not really anything to do with politics, um, but Stoke seems to be slowly emerging, slowly developing. The, the cleaning up and the uh, re-diversion of the Trent itself, you know, Stoke-on-Trent, that's what it's about. We live on the River Trent. And, and the Trent in Stoke, going through Stoke, has been hidden far too often. And now all the work that's been done there to open that up, uh, alongside new developments on the old Victoria ground, it's just making Stoke looking looking to become a, a more lively conurbation and a more lively place to want to come and live. Isn't that going to be even better with, with the university right at the heart of it? And that's what I think about, you know, the, the six towns of Stoke-on-Trent. In some areas, we're so depressed by, the, you know, the negativity of, uh, of development. You know, we, we're, we're going through a period not just nationally, not just locally, but nationally and internationally, uh, where our ways of shopping are, are, are completely changed. Dare I say resurgence, it's not going to be the industry that we, it used to be, but the resurgence of pottery manufacture in Stoke-on-Trent, you can actually see it. there's good evidence um, that, that internationally we're selling abroad more than we have done for some decades for that matter. So I think, you know, again, you know, it, it all revolves around this core. And I think every city needs that. We tend to say, you know, these quarters, we've got the cultural quarter in Ireland, that's fine, okay. But we've definitely got the education uh, and artistic quarter, certainly at the moment, and, and further development in Stoke itself. So Stoke and the university virtually are the centre uh, or, or, or being expanded to be the centre. And I like that. And I think other people will like that. I think it's been noticed, not just locally, but uh, outside of city. It's great. It just feels good, doesn't it? I think it's interesting that you mentioned the changes that have gone on and the changes that you can feel, even though you can't quite put your finger on what the change is or the catalyst of the change or, or of that, but there's still an element of things that stay the same. So I think if we look at it from our side, I mean, we... You know, we started off of, off of a, a donated piece of land from Alfred Bolton and that land was meant for education and that mm. is what we now know as the Cadman Building. And yeah. then we've changed from being, a, you know, a mining college, um, technical college, art, all of that, everything that's a, a, a vocational side is is us, is staff. So it is, I think it's Stoke-on-Trent. I think it's Staffordshire as a whole. I think that's what we are. But there's still that element of things that stay the same. Even though things change, things move on, times change, um, you know, technology comes into play and, and you know, the I mean, just, just looking at the courses that we have on offer uh, from that side, if you think how computing used to be one entire room dedicated to one system that, you know, and it was still done on the, on the punch paper and it was all of that, to now where we're, we're all carrying a computer around with us, we're either wearing one or we're carrying it with us. But there's still the need for computing, there's still the need for technological advancement, there's still that. It's just changed, but still the same. You, you, I mean, you're absolutely right. And, 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 and first of all, can I just compliment you on your, uh, your clear uh, 
obvious knowledge of Stoke-on-Trent's history and the university's history. It's great and it's good to listen to you. You know your subject and you know your subject well. I mean, the Boltons, for instance, um, I mean, there's been a lot. This was the age, of course, when the, the, the land was, was donated. This was, you know, the age, the dying age, if you like, of the philanthropists. And Daltons were one, and you didn't get it so much after that. Of course, you, you were going into world wars, and of course that defeated quite a lot as far as energy and and, uh, and, and looking after pride in uh, in one's in one's environment, oneself. Um, but that gift itself shows you the quality of. Um, I mean, he, 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 they were doing that simply because of of passing on and creating their their own series of apprenticeships, their own inner development, and you know, so much detached from their own factories. And this is interesting, you could say, um, before colleges, um, factories, and particularly potteries, supplied their own training, and, and it was done at the bench. Um, so you'd have an apprentice, an attachment to the the master worker or the mistress worker and that resolved when universal training came in and the Bolton saw this um, it was has to be detached from the bench and it had to be widened and developed so it was in in, in that sense attracting more people not just from um, down your street but from the next village the next town the next region and, and, and I think that's, the, you know, the great thing. To have that vision is, is wonderful. And that's what the, the, the land donation was about. It, it was a vision. We have this um, mass of artistic and engineering expertise. And we want to show everybody else, everywhere else, that we have that and invite people in to take part in it and to stay and to celebrate it and to develop it. That's vision, and you had quite a lot of that in the um, in that philanthropist period, um, you know, in that sort of late Victorian time. The, the world changes, and the world changes all sorts of things. In a sense, what you were talking about, um, nothing does change in some areas, has a lot to do with parochialism, um, and and of course, when you we were we were just over a hundred years uh, from that federation, so. You know, just over 100 years ago, we had six towns. The people in Longton, for instance, very often couldn't understand the language of the people in Tunstall because the, 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 the different dialects um, were, were so, you know, so widespread and di used for different reasons. And it's a question where the Burslem people, the average Burslem people, ever, ever um, got on a bus and went to Longton or Fenton. You know, these things didn't happen. From 1910, of course, this is when it does develop. So we have, we have removed some parochial attitudes, but there isn't anything wrong with being parochial. And I, you know, I say that we've lost in Burslem um, the School of Art during the 1970s, the early 1970s, when it was brought along with the Sutherland Institute in Longton, when it was brought into the university. What happened to the School of Art in Burslem was a bit sad at that time, but suddenly you started to get innovation. And currently, the School of Art in Burslem is a real thriving bed of education and intellectual processes. It, uh, it houses the uh, sixth form, uh, the, uh, the sixth, uh, the sixth what's, what's the college name from Hayward? City College. So City College, we, you know, just that. You think that the City College now sits in the School of Art that, um, that the art students knew uh, as their center before it went to the Polytechnic and the university. And, and of course it now has rooms and it invites people to come in there to develop their own cultural, community cultural aspects and attitudes. And I think that's wonderful because it's just, it's a passage of time. It remains in Burslem, it has that parochial feel about it, but nevertheless, it's not sort of closed off because it, 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 it's, it's an open course, they're open courses and, and, and you know, just people go there. So wherever you see these gaps, wherever the university has created gaps, wherever centralism has created gaps, they are being filled now. It doesn't happen overnight. You, you know, it took many, many 
it, it took a couple of hundred years um, to complete Stoke-on-Trent as we know it, and most of that was developed by the Victorians. Um, I love going around Stoke-on-Trent uh, with visitors and showing them the, the buildings that still exist from the Georgian period, pre-Victorian period. You know, the, 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 the town centre, um, Georgian style houses are still there, been redeveloped into something else. And then how the Victorians attacked it, virtually attacked it, and built these wonderful, magnificent buildings that actually fit in. They're not, they're not big buildings, they're not overflowing, they're not bigger than the town itself, but they just fit nice and neatly into the town centres. So each one of the six towns has its own sort of difference uh, in the way it, it wants to show itself. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, it's a matter for the individual. And whilst we still have that, you know, I come from Burslem, I come from Longton, I come from Fenton, I come from Stowe, well, we still have that, that's fine. That's fine, but at the end of the day, you see, we all come from Stoke on Trent, and that's what we say when we go out. We don't say we come from Bristol, we say we come from Stoke on Trent. We say we come from the place where they make pottery. And, you know, the continuing develops like the, the, the opening of the canal more now, so we've got canal visitors, um, and, and the developments alongside the canal. You look at the, um, the Middleport pottery uh, through the Princess Trust, how that is developing. You look at the working pots, like Emma Bridgewater, you know, those still maintain those Victorian and before uh, aspects and attitudes of how to make pottery with modern designs. And you have the studio potters, uh, many of whom have been, um, have graduated through Staffordshire University uh, on ceramic and artistic courses. They are developing well now and they are becoming noticed outside. Uh, and you can see it often. Uh, so there is a value in, in a way, there's a value in parochialism, but to the extent where if nothing stays the same, well, that's fine. It can adapt. And one day, and it won't be too far in the future, I hope, um, it would come together. And people will realise that side of Stoke and Trent. There is something here. They're beginning to now. You know, we're getting film producers coming in and making films, feature films even, uh, about Stoke on Trent, inside Stoke on Trent, about its famous people like Clarice Cliff, uh, Josiah Wedgwood, the, 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 the Lunar Society, um, which has been going on. Um, you know, for many, many years, is being revived in Stoke-on-Trent as we talk today. Its inaugural meeting is in is in next week. Is 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 being zoomed out next week um, with contributions from the Victorian Albert Museum, with contributions from the Lunar Society uh, at um, at Birmingham, and 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 this is another sort of way of of integrating of of, of showing. Of the people outside of Stoke on Trent that we mean business who haven't lost it. Perhaps we've put it to one side at the time, but so has the world. You know, we've come through a long tunnel. Um, but I've always been a, a person that's been able to see that, and the more optimistic side, that the end of the tunnel is a pretty nice place. It's not going to be worrying. It has its dangers, of course it does, and it has its, you know, it it it, it has its conflagration in a sense that things couldn't quite go the way we want them to but i think you know because of the nature of the people in stoke-on-trent because of the area where we live the geography all of it comes together it's history and i think you know it's it's it's, it's going to be a really smashing place I agree, Fred. If I could just interject slightly, uh, I really enjoyed listening to you talk about this area. And for a lot of young people thinking of choosing a university or thinking about HE, I think it's really important to know that things are cycular, aren't they? And we, Sam hinted on it, things have changed but haven't changed. And I think it's really important that through like a break in a war, for example, and students that wanted to go to you, the college that it was then and couldn't, we've almost got a similarly now a break with COVID and through a, a, a breaking point have come a period of, of, of growth. And I think we're moving into that area now, aren't we? You've mentioned a lot of the digital things. Uh, I live in a small market town called Leek 
Um, so I'm from the Staffordshire Moorlands, but I still say I'm from stoke on trent And they've been filming the cutting room on a little street near to where I live. So I think this area and a lot of students now need to start looking beyond the course and thinking, am I going to go to that particular geographical part of the country? And there's so many layers to it. And what can I unearth about that particular area? So it's fascinating listening to here. But what I would really love to ask you, Fred, as well, is... In terms of what advice would you give a young person now thinking about university, coming out of COVID, what are the things that you would be asking of them? Well, I think uh, coming out of COVID, you you have touched on some very, very interesting points, Gareth. New people who are about to come into um, the university world, if you like. So we're looking at people who have been to, uh, not just people who have been to, sixth form and this is the natural education progression we're also looking at people who are um, more mature students uh, who see the area um, who uh, who love the area and and who want to contribute and 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 you know are interested in helping themselves by further education Um, Staffordshire University pretty much offers a lot of this if I was um, leaving sixth form and wanting to go to a university because I have my life is basically around um, cultural uh, aspects, historic aspects. Uh, I would seriously look at university at Stafford, Staffordshire. Um, that's simply because I know that it offers well. As far as the environment that goes in tune with that, um, I think I think that is growing, and I think there are many interesting things that um, Staffordshire and Stoke-on-Trent in particular can offer students now. Um, And and I don't think I'm alone in thinking this. As I've said before, people are actually taking their cameras now and making films of us. Uh, People are picking up pens and writing novels about us. Some of the instinctive things for the past like the Arnold Bennett Society are really flowing with ideas. Um, There's a lot of cultural development in Stoke-on-Trent and if for nothing else um, Stoke-on-Trent makes Stoke-on-Trent a very attractive place. Now I'm not sure whether I've answered fully your um, question that that you've posed there Gareth but um, I think you know further education is so important probably never before in, in, in education history has it been as important. And I think people now are taking advantage of the openings that our uh, young people have taken advantage of the openings alongside, of course, apprenticeships uh, and are, are using uh, further education and higher education um, as, a, as a means not just to find a job, but as a means to enlighten their lives to enlighten their culture and develop their vision and their their future aspects. And that can't be bad. No, I agree. It can't be bad at all. There's so many options for young people moving forward. And um, I've just spent the last 13 years working working at uh, Newcastle and Stafford Colleges Group. Uh, I've just taken a job here working for the Office for Students on a nice collaborative project with Keele University staffs, Harper Adams and Chester. And what we try and do, Fred, is is work with underrepresented groups of young people who probably didn't think university was for them. And what we're starting to shine a light now is to give these young people an opportunity to, yes, get better jobs, but also culturally improve themselves and give better experiences and meet new people they wouldn't normally meet. And that is something that's probably been apparent throughout the history of this university is like you've just said, people from Longton wouldn't understand people from Burslem. And that's what university does so very well. It puts you in touch with people you wouldn't normally associate with. And I think it's really important that we touch on that and get young people excited about meeting new people, especially in a post-COVID world where we're all sick of Zoom, aren't we? We want to meet people face-to-face and enjoy that opportunity. Well, spot on. I think if, uh, if I was to offer a summary, I wouldn't be able to uh, add more, much more to what you've just said, Gareth. Um, but you're absolutely right. Um, the world is opening up and we want to be part of this. It, 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 you know, never before have we been able to see uh, what is happening across this wonderful planet. And 
for the first time perhaps we're addressing it nationwide uh, you know looking at it from universal prospects the greening of uh, and the educational um, um, way of looking at greening the planet of saving the planet in that sense to put it more dramatically it's something that we probably never ever had to look at before when i was a boy there was no such thing as green space stoke on trent coming to stoke on trent you would expect the blackness and the darkness and the the sourness of the of the of the atmosphere um, it would be it would be smoky it would be filthy and full of grit um, but nobody minded because it was a way of life it was the way industry was making us famous and you know we were part of the industrial revolution that did that but that now whilst it, that, the, the, the heavy stuff is gone but as I've said previously culture is remaining and pottery is is being redesigned in a different way through science but also through the aspect of, of art and, and how we are looking at art differently. Some of the artists that, that, that have graduated through Stafford University have now got their own, um, uh, their, their own um, studios, that are developing studio where that has become really, really famous and really popular. Um, that is an exciting thing, but that is, a, that is again something that, that, that we, that a university can do. A university can not only, you know, give you a degree, but it uh, widens the prospect. It opens doors um, that you, your brain no, ordinarily wouldn't be looking at. So with the time you've finished your three years or you want to go on further, you can do, but the three years after that, you are an entirely different person than the one that went in uh, three years earlier. Uh, and, and I think that's, you know, that is another thing that is another way of looking at it um, through many through many eyes, through many cultural eyes, through industrial eyes. Um, but um, but you know, to look at some studio potters now, and there are many, many, and they're coming up every day. And 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 again, through social media, we can see this. Social media is a great um, tool that people now are realizing. We can share um, not just information; we can share our view of the future we can share our vision our hopes and i think that that is you know that is something else that we need to you know to look at people are enjoying themselves they're coming out of lockdown people are, are not just hastening to the public houses and the parks people are actually wanting to get back into the rhythm of life and the rhythm of education and the rhythm of teaching uh, and I think that's, you know, I think that's certainly the future looks good as far as that's concerned. Absolutely incredible. What I took from that is we work with a lot of young people that feel like they have to have the whole life mapped out for them. So we see them in school and they pick either a college or a school sick form. They think, right, I'm doing those particular subjects or I might even do that degree. I have to go into that industry. But life doesn't quite work out like that. You know, you wanted to see the world. You went in the army that led into the police force. But eventually you found your great passion, which was journalism. And it's kind of, uh, I know you're a football man. So we're recording this just after the FA Cup final, where Jamie Vardy, who's played in every single round of the cup. And the big statement was, it's never too late. You know, he's sort of didn't make it into the professional game until he was 24, 25. And I think what I'm taking from this is advice to young people be interested in different things, go and experience it, fulfill your life, go to university, meet new people, and eventually you'll have this big timeline of really great experiences that you should just love and live. And I think you've said it on more than one occasion, you just love it. And that's the key for me, Fred. I think uh, if you're going to end on a, on this interview on a very, very good note, um, Gareth, I think you've, you've summed it up and, and, and I would leave it at that wonderful fred thank you so much for doing this it's my it's... pleasure pleasure sam i wish we could have uh, been at the university it might have well, we might have had a different aspect at least we would have had a cup of coffee i still owe you that cup of coffee so if you're passing i will most certainly fulfill that one but it, i haven't seen you in a, in a in too long because of everything that's been going on so it'd be very nice to see you soon and like i, I say bring candy along as well because I, I think i talk to candy about every week now um she, you know she's just a 
she's a force that that's the only way I can describe Candy is a force um, and she you know she's absolutely brilliant but thank you so so much for this we're, we're really excited about this podcast it's it's brand new um, this is the second one we've recorded so we did the first one last week this one's the second um, we're, we're very hopeful that it's going to do well but stories like everything you've just talked about there honestly I mean I think I think we've been chatting for about 45 minutes now um, yes. which is because I, I could listen to you all day because um, I, I always come away feeling so uplifted and I've learned so much so thank you so so much as soon as it's live which I think will be in, Ju- in July um, mm. I'll obviously make sure you've got the link I'll make sure that it, it's it's shared with you um, but thank you so so much Thank you, Sam, and thank you, Gareth. It was wonderful to talk to you. It was an absolute pleasure, sir. I've enjoyed reading your articles over the years. I'm a big Stoke fan, so you're one of the very few Port Vale supporters that I can listen to. (laughs) So thank you for all your involvement. You've been a true gent.